Maayong Adlao. Komasta. This is Ben from Philippines Extremes coming to you from a Baobao Cordoba, which is just outside Cebu City. So I wanted to expand upon um, why there is this huge discrepancy in dollar amounts um, in regards to foreigners that come to the Philippines and why some people say you need a higher amount and other people say, no, you don't. You can live on a smaller amount. Now, to me, it's relatively simple and you can kind of break it down like this. Think of it as if you went to Mexico to one of the more popular places and there's a lot of tourists and there's hotels and there's souvenirs and things of that nature and the tourists are buying things. Now, granted, the things that they are purchasing are cheaper there than what they could find in their home country, but they're more expensive than what the locals would pay um, far removed from that touristy place. That's called a tourist trap, right? So it's the same kind of scenario that can be applied to the Philippines. The Philippines um, attracts foreigners, of course, and foreigners tend to live in specific areas. They'll go to Manila, they'll go to Cebu, they'll go to the bigger cities, and they'll live in a condo, and they'll live in a subdivision, and all these places that cater to foreigners. Not everybody, but we're just generalizing here, and the average foreigner um, kind of goes with that approach. And so before they've come here, they've talked to certain people who live in those similar scenarios. And those people more than likely haven't lived in any other type of scenario. So they are approaching their dissemination of knowledge and experience based on what they know. They've never branched out and they've never lived in in any other vastly different type of scenario. Maybe they've moved from condo to condo or a subdivision to a subdivision, but they've never uh, removed themselves too terribly far away from those types of situations. So what do you call that? That's called a tourist trap, just like in, um, in Mexico or you know other places around the world where tourists gravitate towards. Now, obviously, in all of these places around the world, If you are to branch out and move further away from the places where tourists go, you're going to find better deals. You're going to find cheaper prices. But the people who are giving out all this knowledge, quote unquote, um, and pricings, they've never really uh, went and explored and done any kind of grassroots kind of experimentation to discover this on their own. So what you have is a lot of people believing that they have to live their life in a similar fashion and have a similar amount of money. When reality is those people are embroiled in a tourist trap that they don't even realize that they're in and they don't realize that there are other options, significantly cheaper options, okay? Now, for comparison, Cebu City is really close to where I live. Um, However, not a lot of foreigners choose to live at the end of Mactan Island where I live. Um, Mactan Island is, you know, a fairly well-known place Uh, People know Lapu-Lapu. They don't know Cordoba so well, but Lapu-Lapu and and Cordoba are very, very close to each other. And um, so, you know, hop, skip, and a jump, and you're in in Lapu-Lapu. But Cordoba has everything that you need. So it being a lesser-known place, you discover that there are cheaper, more affordable options, okay? Now, in Cebu City, 
Foreigners tend to live in their condominiums. And in Manila, they tend to do that as well. Um, they also gravitate in both of those cities towards subdivisions, okay? And those places um, are usually found on Google or word of mouth or some, something in that nature to where they um, go to those places and they pay those exorbitant prices, those inflated prices because – the owners of the properties, they know that the foreigners are going to be living there and they also know that they have the money to pay a higher price. As opposed to if you move out of those um, areas and, um, and kind of get further away, you discover that you can get a similar type of place for a fraction of the cost. So for example, there's a subdivision in my neighborhood that is literally two minutes away from my apartment that has the same exact amenities as a more, a more well-known subdivision in Cordoba that caters to foreigners. This subdivision uh, near me caters to the more wealthier, uh, well-to-do, more prosperous Filipino. And there aren't hardly any uh, foreigners that, that, stay, that stay there or reside there. So um, the price per month for a two bedroom, basically like a townhome is 10K a month. But the other one that I referred to just a minute ago here in Cordoba that does cater to more foreigners, and there are quite a few foreigners that live there from all around the world, um, it starts at about 22,000 peso per month, okay? So that's the difference, you know. There are tourist traps that people fall into and they don't even realize that they're actually in a tourist trap. So it's not really that complex as to why people assume that they need a higher amount per month to live here because that's all they know. But when you got guys like me who are more resourceful and know that everything is negotiable here. I mean, when I was looking for an apartment for a friend of mine here, we went and looked at several places and each one of them, I asked, what's your bottom? You know, they're asking, you know, 7,000, for example. I said, would you take six? Almost every one of them would, would negotiate the price. So, you know, there is wiggle room for all of these things. And the other thing that foreigners um, also fall prey to is that they will shop in the grocery stores. And this is the, the two hugest things, the food and the living environment. Now, with the food, grocery stores are very similar to, um, you know, tourist traps in that sense. Most of your local Filipinos that are earning, you know, minimum wage per day, they don't go to grocery stores um, on a regular basis. They may go there if they need one specific thing that they can't find in, you know, in a local source. But typically, the grocery stores cater to foreigners and more well-to-do Filipinos. So... The local Filipinos, they buy all of their food at the local wet market, which you can see right in front of you right now on the screen. Okay? That's where you can get you know, all your fresh exotic fruits, vegetables, fish, seafoods, you name it, right there for a fraction of the cost. Now, if you go to a grocery store and you buy those same things, you're going to pay double and sometimes triple the amount that you would pay if you walked right into that place that you're seeing and purchased your items there. So that's a significant portion of your monthly budget just really being thrown away when you don't have to do it. It's just completely unnecessary to do it. So it's not rocket science, guys. It's pretty basic. You can save money if you get out of the tourist traps. And I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but that's facts.
So to the guy that's out there watching these videos and wishing that he could come to the Philippines, but he is concerned that his pension or his monthly income would be too low, this video is for you to just give you a little bit more encouragement to let you know that you can do it, that it is entirely possible if you heed my advice and you stay out of the touristy types of traps that are everywhere in every country. There's no sense in you perpetuating your suffering and your unhappiness in your home country, wherever that may be, when you can come here and change your life and rid yourself of all the baggage that is being pressed down upon you and keeping you from enjoying your twilight years. It's just absolutely unnecessary. So guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate everything that you've done. I love the engagement we've had on the comments, the good and the bad. And um, I just hope that we all uh, learn from each other and we can grow and realize that there is more than one way to skin a cat. Sorry to use a tired cliche, but that's facts also. So thank you for everything and everybody have a blessed day.